We're with Linwood Mayor Christine Frizzell talking about a very difficult topic because her city has been hit with some gun violence in recent uh, days and months. Uh, and, you know, you sent a letter out the other day and it, it had a pretty dark tone to it, but there are three things in it that stood out to me. You referred to the violence as unbearable. You say the city deserves better. Uh, and you say that it doesn't define us. Talk about that a little bit, if you would. Well, when I use the term unbearable, it's in relationship to uh, what's going on, not just in, in our city, but across our state, across our nation with gun violence. Uh, the fact that, that we have um, individuals who because they are concerned about something that's happened in their life or their community that they feel their only recourse is, is with a weapon. And often they are shooting people who are not even in the conversation about that. Uh, I think that what we're looking at in terms of gun violence is the result of many other things that have happened in our community. and. It's easy to blame these on, on COVID where we talk about isolationism, where we talk about we've gotten out of the habit of, of communicating in a collaborative way, uh, all of those things, but, but gun violence didn't start during COVID. Gun violence has been around a long time. And as we look upstream to gun violence, we have to talk about mental health. We have to talk about uh, what's going on in our schools, what's going on in our communities, what's going on uh, in every area of life. It, it's not just an isolated incident that happened in Linwood in the last uh, week or two. We have to come out as society and say, we need to help on the front end of this. We need help so that our children are growing up with appropriate places to be, appropriate places to, to play and to be kids. We need to talk about uh, crime in general and how it has become uh, never in this city, but across other communities about defending our police. We have to talk to our legislature people about laws that they enacted that make policing much harder than it was uh, just two or three years ago. All of these conversations need to be happening and they are happening, but we need to be having them uh, at what I call a bigger table. We need to be including more people in these conversations. In my letter, I talked about uh, talking with uh, our cops and clergy talked about block watch, talked about national night out. We need to change the narrative uh, back to family. And, you know, it's easy to say, uh, you know, family values. And I know that's a buzzword, uh, but, but really what do we want our families to look like? Where do we want, where do we see our cities uh, five months, five years from now? Uh, do we want to restore values of respect and civility in how we communicate. Social media has not been a friend in any of this either. And that, uh, again, polarizing people who don't agree with you. We need to get back to where we are listening more than we're talking. And uh, you touched on some of the, the work that you're doing in Linwood, and I'll get back to that in a moment. But I wanted to ask you what you say, and I'll use myself as an example, to somebody like me. Uh, I live a couple of miles away from where these two shootings happened last week. Uh, I do a lot of my business very nearby, right around the corner there. And, and it's unnerving. And, and what do you say to folks while you're trying to sort through all of this about how they should go about their lives? I too live just a couple miles away. I, I drove by Spruce Park this morning. Uh, what I say is we need to start having those hard conversations. Let's start with our families. 
let's start saying this, this um, is how we want our society to be and then take action to make sure uh, that we're living out what we want our community to look like. What I say to people in our parks and people who walk on the streets of Linwood as I do, pay attention. If you see something that doesn't seem right, call 911. 911 is not the number you call after something has happened. We have tremendous first responders. But if we can, can cut something off at the pass before it becomes first responders responding to someone bleeding on the sidewalk, then we've prevented something. And, and you can't uh, count those in a holistic way of saying, well, we prevented this from happening. All we do is we count what happened after the fact. And I'll just give a shout out to our first responders who start with, with uh, the dispatchers. When we call 911, they are the first first responders. Then they send out the police, they send out the fire. And, and in a lot of circumstances, unfortunately, then we have the medical examiners. So um, they are all part of responding. But for us as community members, Let's pay attention to what's going on. Let's spend less time looking at our phones and more time looking at what's happening in our communities, what's happening at the grocery store, what's happening uh, at our schools, what's happening at, at whatever games that our kids are playing. Let's be more aware. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, and I certainly don't want to do anything to undermine the investigations, but I'm curious if, if detectives have said anything to you about the, the two incidents last week, and they've hinted that they might be gang related. They're looking into seeing if they're linked to each other. What, what have you learned? What I've learned is that my police take this extremely seriously. They're not just working within the Linwood Police Department. They're working with Snohomish County. They're working with our neighboring police uh, departments. They are working on a problem that's that's been going on for a long time. As I said, we're seeing the result of that. And I would invite you to reach out to our police department uh, once they've finished uh, the investigation. And, and as I said, it's not just our police department. It is an area uh, alert. And I've, I've received communication and I've talked with people uh, elected officials, as well as people uh, in the police uh, community. When something happens in one of our cities, especially South Snohomish County, it ripples to every city. Uh, and we need to be intentional about working this through every one of our cities. And that is something I'm working on actively with some of the other mayors and elected officials. Well, let's talk more about that because you mentioned, uh, you know, like the block watch and, and working with clergy. What are we doing to try to start to make a dent in this problem? The biggest thing is we have to, number one, admit that we have not just a problem with the gun violence, but we have problems upstream from gun violence. I already have an appointment on my calendar to speak with the new uh, superintendent of, of Edmonds School District. We need to be talking with people in the PTA. We need, uh, we need that conversation. Uh, a thing that we are actively doing, which I think will be a tremendous help is our community recovery center that we're in the midst of building in where people can, can go and get help with mental health issues, with drug and alcohol issues, uh, domestic violence issues, before it becomes a gun violence situation. We need to be addressing things upstream. How are the community groups in Linwood in terms of working with young people and, and working with others to try to help tackle this problem? Because I know they've had some success in other cities here in Washington. 
So yesterday I spoke to a group of young people who were attending our police youth camp that happens every single year. Uh, well, except for some COVID out time. Uh, building relationship. Our parks department, they run uh, parks programs every summer. We have Meet Me in the Park. We have Shakespeare in the Park. We want to get people out in community, enjoying uh, all that we have to offer. And, and when we do that, then we can start those conversations. And, and we need to hear from, from uh, people who have been in gangs. Uh, that's one person that I don't think is at my table, is somebody uh, or multiple people who have been in gangs. And we need to hear the perspective of why there's an attraction to gangs, not, not what we suppose is an attraction to gangs, but why people really get in, into that uh, as a, a choice for their social activity. Again, we've, we've got to start upstream. We've got to start with our kids. Our kids are the ones that are going to make a difference 10 years, 20 years from now. And we need to give them tools to work through that. Well, it's no secret. It's uh, the, one of the hardest times ever, uh, at least in my memory, for being a kid. Uh, you know, I, I'm a child of the 70s, so I remember being able to, to roam the streets on my bike and celebrating the bicentennial and all of those great things that we did with without these fears. So I, I hope we can get back to that. What's your level of confidence that we might actually start chipping away at this uh, in a reasonable amount of time? Chipping away, that, that's an interesting term. Uh, can we see gun violence, you know, decline? I want to believe that we can. The more that we engage people, the more that we have conversations, the more that people uh, see their own community with maybe a different lens. I grew up in Linwood. I went to Meadowdale High School. Both my kids went to Meadowdale High School. This is my city, and my city is hurting. But how we help is by, by talking through that hurt and coming up with suggestions. I talked with my parks director yesterday uh, about, he has a, a great idea about maybe having specific programs for at-risk youth and, and really putting some time and effort and dollars into that. Uh, I asked him to bring those ideas to the table for me to take a look at. We want... We're not sitting back. Our officers are out there. They want to be making a difference. There were officers at the police camp yesterday, obviously, connecting with uh, our next generation. And I really appreciate that about our officers. Uh, in Linwood, we've been doing a lot of de-escalation training with our police. The state mandate is eight hours a year. And we take it a lot more seriously than that. And uh, we do 40 hours. And we're committed to that. We're committed to the safety of our officers. Uh, Chief Nelson has implemented mental health uh, uh, availability for our officers. You can only imagine, I can't even imagine what they go through when they've been on a scene like this. But we need to be helping them to deal with it as much as we can. It's not just about what you see an officer doing uh, at a moment of the day, but at night, my goal is that they all go home safely to their families. And by safe, I don't mean just physically safe. Well, you used a, a key term there. You said the, the city is hurting and it's your city. And I certainly understand that, but uh, I appreciate that you've taken the time to talk about what you're doing about it so that uh, the hurt doesn't have to go on. Uh, Linwood Mayor Christine Frizzell, really appreciate that, Your Honor. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for reaching out.